Good morning. I'm having uh, video problems again. I don't know why the go live button is not working when it's on the horizontal. We've got to put it on the vertical. Anyway, I think we're up and running. So uh, hopefully it's working okay. So we're in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And this chapter of Ecclesiastes is kind of like Proverbs. Uh, so kind of the author uh, kind of changes tactics. So all of this is wisdom literature in Ecclesiastes. Proverbs is wisdom literature as well. But this is kind of really like Proverbs in Ecclesiastes 10. So let's take a look at this. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Dead flies make the perfumer's ointment and give off a stench. So a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. A wise man's heart inclines into the right, but a fool's heart to the left. Even when the fool walks on the road, he lacks sense, and he says to everyone that he is a fool. The anger of a ruler rises against you. Do not leave your place, for calmness will lay great offenses to rest. There is an evil that I have seen under the sun, as it were, an error proceeding from the ruler. Folly is set in many high places, and the rich sit in low place, in a low place. I have seen slaves and horses, and princes walking on the ground like slaves. He who digs a pit will fall into it, and a serpent will bite him who breaks through a wall. He who quarries stones is hurt by them, and he who splits logs is endangered by them. If the iron is blunt, and one does not sharpen the edge, he must use more strength, but wisdom helps one to succeed. If a serpent bites before it is charmed, there is no advantage to the charmer. The words of a wise man's mouth win him favor, but the lips of a fool consume him. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is evil madness. A fool multiplies words, though no man knows what it is what is to be. And who can tell him what will be after him? The toil of a fool wearies him, for he does not know the way to the city. Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child, and your princes feast in the morning. Happy are you, O land, when your king is the son of the nobility, and your princes feast at the proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. Through sloth the roof sinks in, and through indolence the house leaks. Bread is made for laughter, and wine blends life, and money answers everything. Even in your thoughts do not curse the king, nor in your bedroom curse the rich. For a bird of the air will carry your voice of some winged creature, or some winged creature will tell the matter. Let's pray. Father God, we're thankful for your word that you have revealed to us, your presence in our life, your, the hope that is ours in and through Christ. And now we ask that you would be with us as we dig into your word a little bit more and give us understanding, but also application to our life. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, so, so uh, there's a lot of things in this chapter uh, about how uh, there's... Either your work will be thwarted in some way, or could be thwarted in some way, um, spoiled in some way, or there's some danger associated with work. There's also a general contrast between foolishness and wisdom, and sometimes um, wisdom doesn't seem to win out, it seems like. So let's take a look at some of these things. So dead flies make the perfumers only and give off a stench. Well, yeah, that... That would be good. You, you prepared a batch of perfume and all of a sudden some flies are attracted and they die within the perfume. Um, but then he says, so little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. So uh, there could be wisdom in a place, but it is overcome by the folly of other people. Uh, so you see that, you can see that in life as far as um, maybe in a corporation or something where uh, somebody's giving some wise counsel for how the corporation is to go. Uh, what's the what's the path they should take as far as business? But there's others who um, win the day with their foolish advice, 
and the company goes down a bad path. Uh, that can happen in homes, right? Uh, whether you take one way or the other. And he compares this, um, you know, talking about, well, even a fool when he walks does something simple, like walking on a road, um, that uh, they lack sense and it's known. Now, verse 2 is not talking about politics, you know, a, a wise man heart inclines, inclines to the right, but a fool's, fool's heart to the left. It's not a <laughs> talking about politics. It's talking about um, right and wrong being um, kind of uh, portrayed as the right and the left. So right and wrong, right uh, portrayed as right as the right and the left. Um, so uh, those are things you know, good versus evil, honesty versus uh, deception. All of those things are kind of are put into that. So um, verse four kind of is interesting because it's like if anger of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your place. In other words, if you flee, you're going to look guilty. But you stay, you calmly stay there, and you're trusting that truth will prevail. You're you're maintaining your position that truth is going to prevail and that calmness will come to the ruler. The anger of the ruler will subside and see, oh, maybe I made a hasty judgment on something. Um, and then he kind of contrasted verses 5, 6, and 7, um, that sometimes it doesn't seem to work out the way it should, right? Folly sits in high places, uh, and the rich sit in a low place. Well, here's, here's talking maybe in riches and wisdom, but also, you know, associating this wealth with wisdom in, to some extent. Um, slaves and horses, princes walking the ground. So, you know, it's kind of reversal of what you would think uh, is going to happen. So, uh, wisdom doesn't always win out. Um, and then it talks about the dangers in various uh, aspects of work, right? So you're uh, digging a pit, you could fall into that. You know, one of the things, the dangers of digging, digging a trench is actually the walls may collapse in on you. So sometimes those, and that, that has happened from time to time in which then somebody is suffocated in, di in digging a ditch. So those walls have to be braced and so forth. Um, my uh, brother-in-law, for a period of time in his life, worked in the coal mines in Somerset County, uh, Pennsylvania, and um, his job was to put long bolts up into the roof, in which you had to, the bolt was longer than the width of the tunnel in which they were in. So you kind of lay on your back and put the bolt part way up. It had to be bent, and then bend it, straighten it some more, put some more up. And the reason you're putting those bolts up into the roof is to prevent cave-ins. Uh, not a pleasant job, <laughs> I would say. Not even close. So there's danger involved in work like that. Danger, and he's pointing that out. And... Um, a serpent bites him who breaks through a wall. A lot of the walls uh, were made of clay, and they had a hollow section, good place for snakes to be putting their nests in. Not, uh, not fun, uh, breaking through that and then being bit by a snake. Um, so he's saying, you know, hey, you need wisdom in doing your work. Uh, you have to be careful. Uh, he acquires stones, is hurt by them. He who splits logs is in danger. I, I've split many logs in my life, and sometimes a piece flies off, uh, hits you in the leg. I've known people who actually, uh, there's been incidents of people getting impaled in their leg by a splinter that came off the, the, uh, the split log. So there is danger involved in, in these things. Uh, we have to use wisdom. And then use the right tools he's talking about in verse 10 for the job. The iron is blunt, it's going to take more strength. Sharpen your things. So for us, in our, in our endeavor, in our work that we're doing, it might not be, for most of it, it's not manual labor, but to use our mind, uh, to keep our mind sharp in the work that we're doing so that we're doing it as 
efficiently and in the best way possible. So he's talking about that. Um, and then, you know, here's somebody who's doing a particularly dangerous thing to make some money, a snake charming. He said, well, if the snake bites him before he's done charming him, then there's no advantage to him. He's not even going to get paid, plus he's going to suffer from the uh, effects of, of the serpent bite. Okay, so, um, so the words of a wise man, verse 12, mouth win him favor but the lips of a fool consume him. Uh, so when you're speaking, is your, speak, is your speech uh, salted with a sense of humility, uh, a sense of grace, uh, a sense of gentleness? How do we approach people who, with whom we disagree with? Uh, do we do it harshly, with harshness, or do we do it with a sense of humility? And graciousness, speaking the truth in love. How do we do that? Uh, how do we approach people? Um, and then uh, a fool multiplies his words, uh, even though he doesn't know what's going to happen. You know, there's people that can go drone on and on about things, and and they have no idea what's going to uh, happen in the next five minutes, let alone the next five days, five months, five years from now. Um, who can tell him what will be after him? Um, the toil of a fool wearies him, for he's not another way to the city. In other words, he just he's just mindlessly working, 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 toiling away with no end goal in sight, with nothing. You're just just doing stuff without any end end goal in sight. Uh, and then he talks about well, you know, there could be time when you're under the leadership you're under is completely foolish. Not that we have any of that, right, in our, in our political realm these days. Uh, and you're talking about uh, a king who is a child uh, and your prince's feast in the morning. In other words, they don't care about the people. It's just all about themselves and enriching themselves and doing what they want to satisfy their own flesh and not caring about the people. And then he says, in contrast to verse 17, would be a a king uh, who the princes will feast at the proper time. In other words, just to get strength to serve the people and to care and to care for those that uh, that are, are under their rule. So, uh, what would you rather be under? A ruler who is only concerned with their own satisfying, satisfying their own flesh, enriching themselves, or a ruler? who uh, is serving the people and caring for those. So Jesus came to, as he's the king of the universe, but he empties himself and comes to seek and to save the lost. He, he, he says, I came not to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. So that's the ultimate. Here is the creator of the universe, the king of the universe, emptying himself for our behalf and serving us. Um, <clears throat> And then verse 18, right, this is obvious, through the sloth, the roof sinks in, and through indolence, the house leaks. In other words, you're not taking care of your property. You're not taking care of the things you have, you're called to steward in your life. Uh, and so there should, there's, here's the thing. When we have stuff, there's constant maintenance that has to go on. So there's also, uh, there's foolishness in gaining seeking to gain so much stuff, too much stuff, that all you're doing is constantly serving that. That becomes your idol. That's, a, that's, a, that's an idol. But if you have your home, uh, be satisfied with that and uh, seek to keep it up. If you don't, inevitably, the world around us wins, it, wins out. It doesn't take long. I mean, if, like if you abandoned your home and came back a year later and nothing was done to it at all, not a single thing, what would your home look like? What would the property look like? So there's a constant sense of, of upkeep that we have to do. Bread is made for laughter and wine blends the heart, and money answers everything. Well, he already said that money isn't the answer to everything, but it is a uh, something that can help you in times of trouble, if you have 
a saving and a cushion. So it's wise that you have, uh, you know, some people would, would say, in, well, in general, Americans want things now and are willing to go into debt for many, many things that you shouldn't be going into debt for. Uh, live within your means, or in fact, live less than your means. Accumulate a certain amount of savings for a day of trouble. Maybe it's six months' salary, whatever it is. It would be wise to do. And it's wise to live less than your means. This way you can accumulate a, a, a savings for retirement and so forth. And it helps in those times of downturn uh, that inevitably come. It's not always rise, 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 rise. Sometimes the economy falls, you lose your job, other things occur. It's wise to live on less than your means. Uh, and then you have um, an answer for when things go bad. We're not going to put our ultimate trust in money. The, root, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, as the scripture says. But it is to be a wise steward of the things and to prepare. That God uh, has given you a wisdom and a mind. Uh, use those things wisely and use the resources he's given to you wisely. Um, even in your thoughts, do not curse the king, nor in your bedroom, uh, nor in your bedroom curse the rich. So if we're in the habit of speaking badly about people uh, behind their back, sooner or later, it, it, it gets back to them. Uh, and so we, we're called in the scripture to put the best construction on all things, to not think the worst of all people around us, and to put um, and to constantly tear down those who are around us, pointing out the flaws, pointing out how terrible they are. We don't know them. We don't know what they're struggling with in their, in their life. So to uh, have a mindset in which we're not uh, there to tear down somebody behind their back, but to seek to build them up and to encourage one another, uh, to see how we can pot, how we can best love our neighbor. So all these are kind of... Uh, proverbial sayings that he has in chapter 10 as he goes through that and uh, good advice for our lives uh, how to live our lives and to, to follow Christ um, we're not saved by these things but we bear witness to Christ through the life that we live and how we care for and love our neighbor so let's pray Father God thank you so much for this time together thank you for your word, the truth of your word. Thank you for your presence in our life and lead us and guide us, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a great week.